Hello all. My name is Paresh Naik. I am an ENT surgeon who loves to operate and teach. Please feel free to drop suggestions or questions in the comment section below. And for patients, if you have any ear, nose or throat symptom or complaint, please visit your nearest ENT doctor. I got few suggestions to discuss the anatomy of the neck. I think people were too bored to discuss the anatomy of the paranasal sinus. So they must be asking why not go with something more complicated. That's very interesting. You know, ear, nose and throat, they have unique anatomy in their own way. Neck is very compact structure and it's like a compact burger and there are multiple layers. So let's start with muscles. We will go step by step. If someone teaches me how to bake a cake and a brownie and a cookie at the same time, trust me, I am not going to remember any of it. So maybe it's me, but I, that's why I like to go step by step. And now let's have a look at the neck muscles. So as I said, neck is a very compact structure and there are a lot of muscles. These muscles are mainly responsible for movement of the head. Also, they help in swallowing, breathing and most important, it's useful for us as a surgeon. We need to know the plane and that actually helps us during the surgery. So, the neck muscles, they consist of three main groups. They are anterior, lateral and posterior. Okay, based on their position in the neck. This muscle, let's discuss the anterior muscles and we will go in installments. Like how there are multiple episodes in a season. Let's call this as episode 1, superficial muscles. Sounds good. So the superficial muscles are mainly two muscles. Platysma, this as you can see, the sheet, a flat muscle going from the chin to clavicle. And the other friendly muscle is sternocleidomastoid. The reason I say friendly muscle is because it is actually very helpful when we are palpating neck. So, Let's talk about the first muscle. It is wide flat sheet. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's like an operating gown, like a scrub to the neck. That is, it is draped from the front and it is uncovered from the behind. Something like that, just to remember. So it is surrounded by the superficial cervical fascia. So when you're going for a neck surgery, you take a scalpel and make an incision. The first thing you'll see is the superficial fascia. Then you'll see a pinkish thin sheet like muscle. Not like muscle but sheet muscle. Interesting point of platysma. It arises from thoracic fascia. Can you see this whitish thing? It is nicely demarcated that uh, it is arising from the thoracic fascia which covers the clavicle deltoid and pectoral muscle it goes and it gets inserted over this part so it is anterior laterally it gets inserted remember it starts from below and it goes up and it is inserted on the lower border of the mandible the skin the lip as well as it blends in the subcutaneous tissue of the skin Quite interesting. The other muscles of the body that lie deep to the subcutaneous tissue, platysma is situated within the subcute tissue of the neck. So, what is this nerve supply? Well, our favorite nerve of the face, the facial nerve. I'm taking the liberty to call it as our favorite because it is our favorite. So, from the facial, it comes from the cervical branch mainly, but there are a few fibers coming from the mandibular branch. 
its action it tenses the skin over the lower aspect of the face so remember many people uh, they start taking botox later in the age because this is the muscle that stretches and causes that drooping kind of uh, smile look um other thing what that can it can do is it also contributes to the depression of the mandible angle of mouth and producing facial expressions like disgust surprise and horror you can try that let's see our second muscle that is sternocleidomastoid i love the color coding it is quite nice for us to register in our brains so this is by far our friendliest neck muscle the reason i am saying it's friendliest because uh, it helps actually to identify any lumps in the neck the moment a patient comes in the clinic and a patient is complaining of something in the neck we palpate the angle of mandible and we try to see if it the swelling is somewhere related to the sternocleidomastoid so as you can see it's an oblique muscle and there are two that is paired it's long and it connects the upper thoracic part to the skull base okay so it has got two heads can you see here over here so it has got two heads one arising from the sternum that is a sternal head the other one is a clavicular head and they merge can you see belly number 1 belly number 2 becoming a single belly of muscle so it it merges to become one belly this is quite big and we often used to uh, retract this with langen back or richardson retractor during neck dissection to pick up some nodes from level 2 level 3 level 4 so it passes upwards and laterally and it attaches or sorry it inserts into the mastoid and the lateral half of the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone okay so it's quite simple so it has got sternal clavicular mastoid hence the name sternal cleido mastoid okay the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle is easily palpable and it serves as a important structure while dissecting and doing surgical procedures as well the nerve supply is from the spinal spinal accessory nerve that is the 11th nerve also some nerves arise arising from the cervical plexus that is c2 and c3 they supply now here's the most important thing about this action we always get confused so the first thing to begin is this part the lower part is fixed okay this is not fixed part so this is fixed part part we know this is the muscle it will contract that is the length of the muscle will decrease from here maybe it will go here now imagine it's all about imagination okay imagine this is the fixed part the muscle contracts that is decreases in size what will happen this part will come in front that is towards you and this part will go away from you okay let's do this one more time this is the fixed part muscle contracts decreases in size this area occipital area will come towards you and this will go away from you so what will happen when a muscle will contract the head is going to rotate on the opposite side if the right muscle contracts the head will go to the left side if the left muscle contracts the head will go to the right side and if we are keeping the head in a fixed position so this is fixed this is fixed and if this muscle contracts what will happen is the sternum and the clavicle they will get lifted this will expand the thoracic cavity so these are the superficial muscles in our next episode we will 
see the stern suprahyoid muscles the digastric mylohyoid and genioid thank you if you have come all the way here please like and subscribe appreciate it